Hey guys, take two. Finishing up the Dart 007 Red-Headed Stepchild TPS, TPI project. And I'm finalizing these cores. All the, all the porting is done, all the valve job, everything is all set, done. They're all tested. I gotta show you guys that. But I was going through and I was taking out all of my uh, stress risers and so forth that I do just to make uh, make sure you never have a crack issue. Now, these are going to have a tough life. They're going in 87 IROC, which has got really high underhood temperatures to begin with. Plus, it's Texas, so it's going to have a rough life. One of the reasons is that we're going to be using iron. But like something like this, right, where it has the exhaust crossover, it looks like they just punch it out at dart. And if you take a look, it's got all, all jagged, all jagged uh, pieces in here. I like to take these and machine that all out. Is it going to make that much of a difference if it's a little bigger? Not really. The way these exhausts are shaped, very little uh, airflow goes through that. On these, the that exhaust port actually did flow a few CFM more. You could feel just like a mild, mild amount of air coming through that. Whereas uh, a lot of the GM ones, the air is like blown right in your face when you tested it on the bench. Okay, debarring work like this, I usually use either a one quarter inch oval or three eighth oval. The three eighth oval is really old. You can see it's missing a piece. It makes a very smooth texture when you're all said and done. Now this head has uh, still got to get the rest of this done, so I might as well show you on this, and now I guess I can show you on the head that's uh, a little bit closer to being finished. Some of the things I don't like is, you see this like little, little piece right there? To me that looks like it's a spot where a crack could start. So I will take that very small burr and I'll, I'll eliminate that. Now like here, it's relatively close to that head bolt hole already. So you got to be careful straightening that out and taking that little fissure out there. Another thing that's super important is the edge of the chambers, right? You can see this has been done. This has a razor sharp edge right here. You can take that out with a sand roll if you're careful. You can take it out with a piece of sandpaper under your thumb. But you have to be careful because if you rub real hard on this, this will cut right through your skin. Like a serrated blade. Anything else on here should get a quick radius too. All the head bolt holes, all of your water jacket holes. These heads supposedly have a problem with the water jacket. Let's take a quick look at that. Okay, lighting's a bit of a problem, but you can see, all right, the water jacket hole is standard Felpro size, but it does have this sharp edge right here. I'm just going to take that sharp edge and radius it out. I wouldn't go crazy there because that metal is not super thick. It's only like 125 thousandths to the other side where the push rod would be. You can take these few fissures and stuff out. Even these, I like to clean this all up. I don't like this uh, casting slag. It's just too thin. I mean, what's the chance of a crack starting there? Very small, but still you'd like to eliminate it. Oil drain back holes. I like to give them a nice radius, help the oil come back down to the bottom of the block better. Now, Chevys usually don't have a big problem like that. Small block Fords do. Uh, I've had problems with small block Fords and drain back issues uh, using a stock pan and a high volume pump and 7,000 RPM. It'll, it'll literally suck the pan dry, seize the pump, twist the shaft, and you'll burn all the bearings in the bottom. Ask me how I know. Okay, this is the other head. It's a little bit closer to being done. You can see I go over, I go everything over everything with the long board. Make sure there's no sharp edges to keep things from sealing. As far as stress risers, anywhere you have a sharp edge like this, right? That needs to be relieved. Now, is it possible for a head to fail here? Well, I've never seen a dart head fail there, but I've seen GM head heads fail there. So this isn't quite done. I'm gonna to need to do some more work to this, but I like to take this 
this sharp edge out. Take the sharp edges off of this. The sharp edges don't do anything but give you a stress riser and a good place to get cut when you're handling the heads. You would think I'd do that earlier on, but I probably should. <laughs> Instead, I handle them with the sharp edges. No one ever accused me of being smart. And, you know, it's funny. Uh, machining like this with the razor sharp edges, the old Hencho Mexico blocks that Chevy used to do for the Target Masters were atrocious that way. The blocks were good because they cast them extra thick, and I think they did that so they could be sloppier with their machining. But if you took, an, took one of those blocks and did it up, they were really good because they had really thick cylinder walls. In fact, they were almost as heavy as a bow tie block. I actually have one of them in the old work truck. But those Hencho cranks, they were horrendous. If you picked up a Hencho crank, you'd be bleeding because it was sharp edges everywhere. They gave absolutely no attention to that at all. Okay, I wanted to show you this because these are this is actually done already. Take a look at how small the water passages are on the TPIS. Now these have already been done. They're opened up and they're a lot better than they were. Now that's why I didn't have to do a tremendous amount of work to the, the dart uh, water passages because these were way more restrictive. Okay, they're a lot better than they were, but it's just something that's an anomaly, I guess, to this style manifold. Okay, my old dirty TPI intake that I did for testing, different design. It's got much more generous front passages and it's closed off on the back. Another thing I like to do is just go over it with the long board and make sure everything is right where it should be. Another thing that needs to be done, even though it's iron, is these edges need to be hit with a file because even though it's iron, if you're doing porting with it and you're putting it on and off the stands, they too, they can get nicked up. And you don't want a high spot to keep, keep from uh, holding the gasket really well. So you could do that too. Edge of the chamber is super important. I may be repeating myself. This is more than, uh, I've done this more than once already today. Even head bolt holes inside here could really use a little. This is like a razor sharp. Okay, oil drain back holes, got to do those. Those haven't been done yet. All right, guys, I think I've, uh, I've showed enough on this. I have done, uh, I've done all the flow sheets with the intake mount of old, with the head, all of that, all done. The owner actually asked me to try it with a stock throttle body. Okay, so the one on the left is uh, is my BBK. I guess it's a 52. And uh, it flows really well, as you can see. It's, it's had some work done to it, so it's a, probably a touch better than stock. And on the right is a bone stocker with an added ugly piece that I left in. I figured it couldn't hurt. Now, this has had absolutely no work done to it at all. I'm sure I could improve it quite a bit. But uh, it's certainly interesting to see the difference on the flow bench. Now, I just did it with the, the absolute last one we tested, which was uh, number two in the firing order. And uh, I think you'll like to see that. That's kind of interesting. Just going through a couple of my OCD things. Things like this casting flash line. I like to get that pretty much all the way out. I don't like any of those sharp edges on a head. I'll probably also run a tap through all the uh, the holes, make sure they're good. Now, I used to have a spark plug tap. I haven't been able to find it. So those are what they are. You know what I did notice, though? This is, this is important. It looks like there's the tiniest little chip taken out here. All right, by the time I do my little bit of chamber work. Now, these are nice chambers. They don't really... I don't really change them much. But if you do come close to this with the burr, which I do, and then you put a plug in there, sometimes it can make little chips. I would definitely go around and make sure these are nice and smooth. You don't want any uh, hot spots to uh, start pre-ignition or detonation. All right, guys, I think I got, uh, I think I got enough on these for, for now. Uh, 
you can see how how thin that uh, exhaust seat is. Yeah, well, it's it's a pretty it's a pretty high end exhaust. Am I worried about that reseating or anything? Nope, because those dark seats are hard as hell. So you can uh, you can go for it on something like this. And it's a street ride, so it's going to need uh, it's going to need everything you can. Remember, I did a real small exhaust port on these. It is a street motor. All right, guys, I think I showed you enough for one day. Thanks for hanging out. Have a good night.